Welcome to this Abacus video tutorial. In this video, I'll be showing you how to enable the table map. You'll want to enable the table map if you want to offer your customers table service. I'll also show you how to start a takeaway order from the table map and also a delivery order. I'll show you how to merge tables together and unmerge them. Finally, I'll also show you how to transfer items and orders between different tables. First, we'll go to the drop-down menu at the top of the screen and navigate to Settings. The option we're looking for here is A2, Enable Restaurant Mode. I'll just enable this now. Now that I have it enabled, I'll tap Save to Server and then tap Yes. Now when we tap the Abacus logo on the top left of the screen, you'll see it takes us to the table map. If we tap the Abacus logo again, it will take us to the pause screen you're able to take orders for your customers from both of these screens. For now, I'm going to stick with the table map. If you've had your Abacus point of sale system installed by one of the Abacus technicians, you should already have a table map created for you. If you have a new account, I'll show you in a later video how you can create your own table map. At the bottom of the screen here, you can see that I have two sections for my table map. I have an inside map and also an outside map. You can navigate between these two maps just by tapping this symbol at the bottom. If the table is white, it means that there are currently no customers at that table and it's free. I'll tap table one. Here we have a number pin pad to enter the number of guests that will be sitting at this table. For my example, I'll tap four and then I'll tap Start Order so I can begin taking the order for the customers. As you can see at the top of the screen, the customers are currently sitting at Table 1. Now I'll demonstrate an order. Now that I've taken the order, I'll press the send button at the bottom of the screen. Now the order has been sent to the kitchen and the table colour has changed to purple. We can see what the different colours correspond to at the top of the screen. As you can see, when the table is purple, it means an order has been sent for that table. If the table is blue, it means a bill has been printed for that table. I'll now show you what the occupied colour means, which is red. When I select Table 2, and then select the Activate Table button, you'll see that the table turns red. Now at the top here, you can see that Table 2 is occupied and is now red. The black border that you can see around the edges of the table will get thicker the longer the custom has been sitting there and their order hasn't been taken. If you see that the black border around the table is getting really thick, it's a good idea to take the customer's order as they've been sitting there for quite some time. To take an order on the table that's occupied, just tap on the table and then press load order. Now you can see we're currently taking an order for table 2. I'll quickly put through an order for this table. Now that I've taken the order, I'll tap send to send it to the kitchen. Now we can see that table 1 and table 2 both have orders sent to the kitchen. From the table map screen, you can also start a delivery order. I'll show you how to do this now. First, I'll enter in the customer details. Now that I've entered the customer details, I'll press the blue complete button. You'll see at the bottom of the screen the name of the customer that I'm entering the order for. And at the top of the screen, you can see that this is a delivery order. Now I'll quickly put through their order. Once I finish taking the order, I'll tap send to send it to the kitchen. 
Now you'll see that on the table map, the delivery order for John isn't here. We're on the inside table map and we can't see the order. We also can't see the order when we're on the outside table map. So to access this order, we'll go to the drop down menu and go to held orders. Here you can see the delivery order for John Smith. The held order screen will also show you every other order that's been taken that hasn't been paid for yet. So we can see the order for table one and also the order for table two. Now that John has come into the store to pick up his order and he wants to pay, I'll select the order from held orders. With the order selected, I'll go down to pay. The total is $17 and John has handed me a $20 note. So here, I'll enter 20 into the system. Now that I've entered the cash amount that John has given me, I'll select the green cash button. The change required is displayed here and you can see it's $3. After we've given the change to the customer, we can either choose to print the receipt for them or email the receipt. I'll tap print receipt here. If you wanted to email the receipt to the customer, just tap email receipt. If the customer has already been added to the database, the email will send straight away. As John's a regular customer, his details have already been saved in our database. Now we'll go up to the drop down menu and back into held orders. You'll see that the order for John is now paid, so it's no longer listed in held orders. But we still have table one and table two that are still active. Now I'll show you how to start a takeaway order from the table map screen. To do this, we just tap the Abacus logo and we'll be taken to the table map. Now we just tap takeaway and now we enter in the customer's details and also their pickup time. Now that we have the pickup time selected and also enter the customer's name, we can press the blue done button here. Now you can see we've started an order for Steve Smith and it's also a takeaway order. Now I'll take Steve's order. Now that I've taken Steve's order, I'll send that to the kitchen so it can be prepared in time for him to come and pick it up. Let's assume that Steve has come into the store to pick up his order. We're going to go up to the drop down menu, to held orders, and we can see here the takeaway order for Steve Smith. We're going to select the order. When Steve placed this order over the phone, he forgot to mention that he wanted an extra drink. He can add this to his order now before paying. Now I'll select drinks and add the Sprite that he wanted. You'll see that all the items that have already been sent to the kitchen or prepared are red. Any new items will be blue. Now that I've added that drink to the order, I'll tap pay. For this order, Steve has given me a $50 note, so I'll enter 50. Now I'll tap the green cash button and the cash drawer will pop open. I'll give Steve the $26 change and also print a receipt. Now that I've printed the receipt, I can complete the sale. Now let's assume that our customers sitting at table one are ready to pay for their order. In order to pay for the order, you select table one and then load the order. Now that the order has been loaded, we can tap the red pay button and take the payment. To pay for this order, the customer will hand us a $50 note. I'll enter 50 on the pin pad and press the green cash button. The change to give the customer is displayed. The customer didn't want a receipt, so I'll tap complete sale. Now I'll show you how to merge tables together. To do this, just tap the merge button and then select the tables that you want to merge together. For my example, I'll select table one and table two. When the tables are selected, they'll turn orange. Now that I've finished making my selection, I'll press done. You can see here that these two tables have a green border around them. 
any tables that are merged together will have the same colored border around them. Now when I select table 1 and load the order, you'll see that the total here is 2980. And you can also see up the top here that this order is for table 2 and also for table 1. Now I'll just hold the order again. You can see that when I tap table 2 and load the order, I'm looking at the exact same order and you can see up the top that this order is for table 2 and also for table 1. I'll just hold the order again. Now I'll show you how to unmerge these two tables. Just select one of the tables that has been merged and then press the yellow undo merge button. Now a prompt will appear saying orders will be reverted to a state just before the change. To confirm this change, just press yes. Abacus also offers the ability to transfer items and orders between tables. I'll demonstrate this now, starting with a transfer of an item. I'll select table 2 and then select transfer items. Here, what I want to do is take the double egg burger and move it to another table. So I'll select it and then tap transfer. Now I'll select table 1 and a prompt will appear asking for me to confirm that I want to transfer the item to this table. I'll select yes. Now you can see that both tables are active and have an order sent. I'll select table 1 and load the order. You can see that the double egg burger has been ordered for table 1. I'll hold this order now. Now I'll go to table 2 and load the order. You'll see that I am just left with the drinks that were originally ordered on table 2. I'll hold these for now. Now I'll show you how to transfer an entire order to another table. To do this, I'll tap table 2, select transfer order, and then select table 3, which is where I want to move the order to. To confirm the change, just tap yes. Now you can see that table 2 isn't occupied and that the order has now been moved into table 3, which is purple.